had some cough syrup my friend brought me to help me with my bronchitis but I think I figured out um, a question that I've always wondered and it, it sounds very sterile, stereotypical and I don't mean to be that way because I envy these people I wish I was one of these people my son who is nine is one of these people and he's smarter than me but I always wonder why quote unquote nerds like kind of sound nasally like talk how they do you know and Drayton, you know, we bought him a phone for his birthday, his ninth birthday, because he's so responsible. He's amazing. And every time I go down when he falls asleep on the weekends, because he's not supposed to watch it to go to bed on weekdays, but weekends, he's always watching some kind of um, YouTube of talking about Jurassic Park or talking about dinosaurs or scientific things. And it's always this one, I mean, not this one voice, but the voices all sound the same. And I'm gonna let you guys hear it right here. And I think it's because they listen to, they, they research this kind of stuff, they listen to it so much that you know you are who you hang around type of thing. So when he, he falls asleep listening to this stuff, he re researches different things and people's voices, I don't know why, but they tend to be like this, I think that's why he talks like this. So here we go. Many of the film's defenders have claimed, bizarrely so, that plot consistency doesn't matter as long as the themes are deep. But the problem is that themes fall apart when the movie's plot contradicts them. For instance, a prominent theme of The Last Jedi is that failure is the greatest teacher, which is blatantly stated in the movie. Not great writing advice, by the way. But Poe's supposed failure is no failure at all. Given what he knows, he does everything correctly in this movie saving the entire resistance from the dreadnought mere days or perhaps hours after destroying Starkiller Base and saving the entire galaxy. Another theme is that we should save what we love instead of killing what we hate. But given that the character who says this is involved in a war against a brutal totalitarian regime intent on mercilessly wiping out all opposition and enslaving the galaxy, this is at best a laughably misguided attitude and at worst outright dangerous. And not only that, it's directly contradicted by the film's own portrayal of the actions of both Paige Tico and Admiral Holdo. Two characters who heroically give their lives to kill hundreds of thousands, or millions in Holdo's case, of enemy soldiers for the cause of the resistance. Imagine if during the darkest days of World War II, someone proposed that the path to liberating Europe and ending Nazi tyranny was not going to be achieved by killing what we hate, but by saving what we love. Do you guys understand the of this? Childish and fatally flawed movie, then we should all be thankful that Allied Command didn't follow Ryan Johnson's advice. Too smart for me. Additionally, The Last Jedi continues to suffer from the same retracted universe problem that The Force Awakens. And they're only talking about Star Wars, a movie. And I'm lost. Yeah, I've never watched Star Wars, but I work in a high school. I've been there for seven years. I help my students in every class. I help out with every single class. I've been in different history classes. And he said something about World War II, and I, I, he's, I couldn't even understand what he said. But do you, do you hear that voice? Like, when you're talking to somebody that has that high-pitched, kind of nasally, matter-of-fact voice, you better listen up because they know what they're talking about. And you better not make fun of them because nowadays, we don't play that. There's, there's the cool kids, the jocks, the goths, the whatever. Everybody is cool with everybody nowadays, and they don't play that. They don't, no, you better not make fun of the nerds. No, you better not make fun of... The, the gay people know you better not make fun of the whoever it we they don't do that anymore so let me just say to you my mom told me this and I did not listen to her she told me marry a nerd because they would love you forever they would appreciate you and they're smart and they were would be the ones that had a good job and then when you're with somebody who does good you do good I didn't listen but luckily our son, one of our three, is a nerd. And he knows it and he loves it. He's nine, just, just is almost done with third grade and is amazing. And he's a nerd, he can't play sports for nothing. His two, older or his two younger brothers are great at sports. So good, like literally like the best on the team, literally. 
like people look, oh my gosh, they're so good. And then Drayton's sitting there, you know, kind of awkward. But he can still make a basket. He's still very athletic. He can do a wall sit longer than any of his brothers without crying at that, because that's what we do with punishment. Wall sits. And the athletic ones sit and cry. And Drayton just sits there with a straight face. He's, he's, he's a good kid. He's very sensitive. He's very smart. He's so intelligent. And he's so, like, in depth with the world. Like, he's going to move mountains and do very, very big things. And he talks like this already. Like, Mom. And I was wondering. I'm like, okay. Like, I don't talk like that. His dad doesn't talk like that. Nobody around here talks like that. Why? I, I mean, you know, why? Like, what? that's a stereotypical nerd, whatever voice. And nerd is not a bad word. It used to be, oh, you're a nerd, you're a dweeb. No, that's not bad. That's, that's a compliment. A nerd is somebody who likes to actually study and likes to learn things and likes to broaden their mind and help change the world. But I, you know, and then when I, <laughs> today when I went to get his phone, Last day before summer break, it was midnight. I got his phone and I hear that same type of voice that I hear every single night. I'm like, that's what it is. You are who you hang around. You are what you listen to. You are, you know? And I'm so happy that my baby, well, he's my oldest, but he's still my baby, is a nerd. He teaches me things every single day. I'm gonna end this by saying something he told me two years ago, so when he was seven. He said, Mom, did you know the brain named itself? And I, he's a joker. He likes to tell jokes. So I said, oh, really? I thought it was a joke. He said, yeah. No, like, really? The, the, brain, our, the brain named itself. And I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, if you think about it, everything you think of comes from your brain. Duh. So the brain is what makes up everything. So the brain named itself brain. Do you, have you ever thought about that before? Maybe yes, maybe no, but that's deep intellectual, like that's, he's got a beautiful mind and I love it. And I love you and thank you for listening. So if you want to make this go viral and show my kids I'm cool, great. If you wanna do stereotypes, great, stereotype me. Like tell me what you think of me stereotypically. Um, tell me about stereotypes, but do not be mean and do not bully. That's what we're not going to do. We're going to do laughing, joking, fun stereotypes. We're not doing prejudice. We're not doing hate. We're not doing hurtful. We're not doing any of that because you will be cut in two seconds. This world is ugly enough. We need happy, fun, funny people. People that we can say, ah, laugh, talk to, have fun with, tell our feelings with a joke with, but all in good fun not ugly, not hateful, not mean, not rude. We're not doing that. We are not doing that. We are lifting up, building up, and making people laugh because laughter is the best medicine, let me tell you. And if you can't laugh at yourself, you have no room to laugh at anybody else. And these are the wisdoms of me, Carrie. Miss Carrie, Carrie, mom, mama, auntie, the crazy one, CC, they call me CC, crazy Carrie. I am who I am. Get it? <laughs> I am who I am. But this is actually a sweet potato. And I could cook some good sweet potatoes, let me tell you. Anyways, signing off. My son's a genius. He talks like that because that's who he listens to. And I love him and I love you. And I hope you tell me some stereotypes or stereotype me or something. And we, let's all have fun. And good job surviving the pandemic. Peace on out. Love you.